Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal. Today's August 14th. I've already covered today's three anniversaries. One was a modern abortifacient death, a, a young woman who thought that uh, penny royalty was going to be safe and natural and it ended up being deadly for her. And a case of grist for the abortion mill, um, a young woman who was just another in a series of dead women at a CD abortion clinic and an illegal abortion where I can't find that anybody was ultimately held responsible. So if you follow the link below, you'll get those three stories. And in the meantime, we're going to get back to the Life Dynamics um, podcast with Troy Newman. I hit the back 15 seconds button after I realized, wait, I think this is, is time for something new. So it's probably going to start in the middle of a sentence. Bear with me. The, the majority of the pro-life movement is more interested in being liked by the abortion industry yes. than they are willing to show what abortion really does to these women and to the babies. I don't think it's wanting to be liked by the abortion industry. I think it's... Um, not wanting to be the one associated with the ugliness. If we're the ones showing all the ugly pictures, then we're the ones associated with the ugliness rather than the people who are creating the ugliness. To win this battle. We have the tools that we need right now mm -hmm. to win this battle. If every pro-life organization would start talking about what we're talking about here, showing the graphic images of what abortion does to the baby, talk about the abortionist raping women on the operating room table. There's a whole chapter in line five about that. And um, we had a case, I call it uh, Lawson Akpolonu and the non-story of, I mean, sorry, Diane Sawyer and the law, non-story of Lawson Akpolonu. When I was working at Life Dynamics, um, Mark had pulled us together for a meeting. He said he got a call from one of Diane Sawyer's people she had heard that abortion clinics were selling abortions to women who weren't actually pregnant and could we provide her with some in, with some cases of facilities that get caught doing that and were still in operation so you know i went through my list and i made phone calls so that i could schedule abortions at these clinics to show that they were still open and we sent those off but mark also kind of pointed out that this is this is a slow news day kind of thing at the time, back before pregnancy tests, home pregnancy tests were common. You know, um, the newspaper or TV show would send a non-pregnant woman in, sometimes with a male reporter's jaw and get told she was pregnant and catch them trying to sell her an abortion. So we were like, how about some really egregious people who are still open? And he's like, oh, well, you know, you, you can send it to us and we'll look at it. So I gathered that up. And as I was gathering that up to send it, Scott, I can't remember Scott's last name. He was the, the liaison with the attorneys. He took a call from a nurse in California who said that she thought all these stories about horrible conditions in abortion clinics were anti-choice propaganda. Then she got hired right on the spot to work at an abortion clinic and she quit before the first day was up because of what she saw and how appalling it was. And there were the standard issue unsanitary conditions, but there's also the fact that the doctor was locking himself alone in the procedure room with anesthetized patients. And we, um, Scott was helping her write up the complaint to send to the medical board and asked her, is it okay if we also send a copy of this to Diane Sawyer's people? And she's like, absolutely. I want people to know this is happening. So we sent that to Diane Sawyer's people. I mean, <laughs> she's getting this complaint to the medical board before the medical board is even getting it. And she, we got a call back. She thinks it's a non-story. Well, you can imagine what he was doing. He was raping his patients but it was a non-story. So um, I'll link to more information about things like that below. Showing them what Gosnell did, what Brian Finkel did to women, what Rapino Santhanon did to women. And um, I'm going to pull up all of these um, 
either from my blog, my YouTube channel, or from um, the Abortion Docs website. I'll pull up stuff for you. So you can follow links below to find more about the things he's talking about. What all these people did, if we would simply talk about it, show the pictures, we could win this battle and wrap it up. Talking about these autopsies. You know, I really don't think we could because pro-choice people don't want to know and pro-abortion people um, give them enough ammunition to ignore it. In fact, in the wake of Kermit Gosnell, the Atlantic claimed that the Gos Gosnell situation was the pro-lifers' fault. Um, yeah, because we supposedly didn't warn the women how bad it was. Well, first of all, you've been telling the women that we can't be trusted. And second of all, you guys were referring them there. The National Abortion Federation was referring them there. Gosnell was working every Wednesday at a National Abortion Federation clinic, starting his illegal third trimester abortions there, and then having the woman come to his Philadelphia House of Horrors to finish it. But somehow it was the anti-choicer's fault for not warning the women. Well, whose fault is it that you sent them there? But pro-choice people don't want to know this, so they, no, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, until it's their daughter, and then they change their minds. Photos, or like the photos of the aborted babies, stuff like that. You know, I know they're hard to look at, and it's for a reason. They should be. They should be. If we find that they're not hard to look at, then that should concern us. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I get why people naturally, like, draw back a little bit, but the question these people need to be asking themselves is, why are these pictures offensive? If abortion is no big deal, mm -hmm. if this is not the taking of the life of a human being, then it should not be so offensive. Mm -hmm. if okay, so they're going off in another direction now. Um, I'm seven minutes into this, and I like to keep these short, so I'm going to back up 15 seconds, so I'm going to back up 30 seconds, and we'll pick up where we left off later.